Kicking off the list at number 10, sea pigs. This list gets creepy and or crawly, but first we gotta ease into the Arctic Ocean. We gotta start off this haunting list with the sea pig. Look at this little guy, okay, the pug of the ocean. He looks like a stress ball with feelings. What's going on with him? They look like something that would be microscopic, but really they're six inches long wide, round, big, I don't know, they're pretty large. They stick together, and I mean that in a literal sense. Sea pigs will travel in large gatherings. They live in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, so they're hard to find, really. Their mating routine is also still a mystery. We have no idea how they do it. And just by looking at them, we're like, no guesses, certainly no guesses from me. All we know is that they travel in groups, so. I don't know. Sounds like it's a good time, at least. Lifespan and mating life, total mystery. All we know is that they eat decaying matter on the ocean floor. Kudos to the crew over at Ambari. The footage they find of these deep sea creatures is always fascinating. It's always so otherworldly over at Ambari. Are you guys hiring? I'm afraid of the ocean, but you know, I'll do some behind the scenes stuff, who knows. I'll just edit the weird fish. I'll put the text in. Like, what the f is this? Ooh, number nine, rock bottom. A little over a year ago, scientists camped out in the middle of the Filchner Ron ice shelf for nearly three months. Why? All in the name of science. Yeah, we're getting cold. Geologist James Smith from the British Antarctic Survey slept in a tent. Who does this? Why do you choose to do this? James Smith, apparently, here we go. He flew five hours out to this ice shelf. Him and his team had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to pour hot water through this ice shelf for 30 hours straight. When the team lowered their gear down through this 3,000 feet of ice, they couldn't get a sample of sediment from the ocean floor because they hit a boulder. I mean, the odds here alone, I mean, the entire sea floor is basically flat and they end up hitting this thing. At first they were frustrated, but this boulder that is 160 miles away from daylight is home to microbial malts, these alien-like sponges. These cylindrical sponges, possibly hydroids. I love seeing scientists get jazzed about stuff. They're like, oh, this rock had absolutely no business being here. Like, guy, you just melted through ice for 20 hours in the middle of Antarctica. I, I feel like it's the other way around. Imagine if those sea sponges could talk. They're like, oh, of all the spots, really? Please close that. The first shred of light and it's just a big GoPro coming at them. They're like, what is that? Number eight, emperor penguins. They're as glorious as their name hints towards. I remember watching Happy Feet a lot growing up. I was really into penguins and tap dancing for a hot minute there. That movie changed the game. The main penguins here, they're all emperor penguins. Robin Williams' character, Lovelace, he's a rock hopper penguin with the cool, you know, the fluffy eyebrows. The other guys are all emperor penguins. The colorful orange necks, the OG characters, they're all beautiful. They're the largest penguins on the planet and their breeding habits set them aside from the rest. Once the female lays an egg, I'm not gonna do sound effects for this whole process. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> That's so stupid. Once the female lays an egg, she'll leave it with her mate for an incubation period, but she'll walk over 50 miles to the ocean just to get food. The mate has to fast for around 100 days just waiting for his next meal. Once in the water, these emperor penguins really go for it. They soar. They can dive up to 2,000 feet, which is far deeper than any bird in the animal kingdom. And they can hold their breath for around 20 minutes, which is incredible. The longest I've gotten is three minutes, but I'm coming for you, Mumbles. Number seven, chin strap penguins. Okay, from happy feet to slappy feet. Chinstrap penguins are the most aggressive of the penguin family. They're crazy. These guys are nuts. They're tiny. They have to be aggressive. I mean, look at them. They only grow up to 30 inches in length. They're so tiny, but again, they're so aggressive. They only grow up to 30 inches in length, so they have to be, you know? These ones don't tap dance. They actually crump battle you. Yeah, they embarrass you in front of you and your kin. Chin straps are small and quick because their diet requires them to be. With krill wading 50 miles offshore, chin strap penguins have quite the commute. Their thick skin is also quite literal. Their blubber keeps them warm during these long commutes. As long as no leopard seals show up, their commute is pretty smooth sailing. Number six, the sea spider. Okay, we had a few ha-has with the penguins. Now it's time to get weird. Now we know why we're here. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just looks like one, kind of like daddy long legs. This is a daddy cold legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. Many species have this. Their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, lack of sunlight, light, friends, family, etc. Scientists believe it's because sea spiders have slowed down their metabolism, so much so they require a small amount of oxygen to survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into like Captain America. They just juice them up. They take on way more than they're adapted to. And in turn, we get giant terrifying sea bugs. Nice. Number five, scale worms. Upon first glance, again, scale worms look microscopic. They look like tiny bacteria that are covered in scales. Hairy, weird, gross scales. They're pretty horrifying to look at. These guys are actually eight inches long on average, so they're not tiny at all. This is what they really look like. The Antarctic scale worm is covered with elytra, these natural bristles. But the most distracting feature here has to be its mouth, head, 
mouth thing, yeah. This part on its mouth can literally fully retract. It can go inside out, yeah. It can suck its own mouth inside of its body, and then when it's time to eat, it pops out and then claws its prey to pieces. Horrible. I saw a video of it, I almost threw up. We went from happy feet to retractable mandibles. Cheers, that's how we do it here on MA. Number four, glass sponges. Antarctic glass sponges. They don't get their name because they're translucent, they get their name because their skeletons contains silica, which is a literal component of glass. How neat is that? Back in 2013, a massive discovery took place. Scientists figured out how these glass sponges grow in size. Well, they figured out that they do grow in general. As our ice shelves slowly disappear, the numbers of glass sponge sightings they increase. They don't hunt down prey at all, obviously. They spend their entire life quite still, just eating the leftovers that happen to drift along their merry way. Their food was so sparse as well, for a long time it was fully believed they couldn't possibly grow. Because what would they possibly eat? The more we learn about glass sponges, the better, because these little guys tell us a lot about climate change. We're like, how is it happening? What's going on? Nothing's happening. We're, they don't talk much. They're really quiet. They don't have mouths or eyes. Number three, the springtail. Also known as the elephants of Antarctica, springtails are hexapods. They're exclusively land animals. Whereas penguins, they sometimes, you know, bop and swim. These guys are only on land. They're tiny as well. They measure up to about a millimeter on average. They look like earwigs almost. Ice earwigs that eat bacteria. Horrible. They got a big old butt too, so you're probably gonna notice if you see one walking by. They live on average one to two years, and they produce glycerol, which helps them, you know, not freeze to death. That always helps. Antarctic springtails live longer than springtails in other parts of the world because the frigid temperatures, again, slows their metabolism down so much they can just survive off basically nothing. They're not immortal, but as far as ice insects go, they're, they're close. They're pretty mighty. Small but mighty. Number two, the hoff crab. When these creatures get their names, it's often in relation to their appearance or their super ability. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse. The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. The hoff crab gets its name because it looks hairy, like David Hasselhoff. He's hairy as well. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the hoff crab with this photo. So random, imagine following him and you see this, you're like, what's going on, why? We love it. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately named after its discoverer, Paul Tyler, from Southampton University. Found in the East Scotia Ridge on the Southern Ocean, where the water is too cold for the hoff crab, these guys are just covered in bacteria, hence their hairy hoff look. Because it spends so much time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy literally just sits around a deep sea campfire just collecting ice cold bacteria. What a, what a wild life. He's a deep sea hairy caveman, essentially. When it comes time to eat, the hoff crab just scrapes off a little bit of bacteria from any part and then just gives himself more food. He gives himself a little haircut salad. We love those. And finally coming in number one, the colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid. Those are similar but smaller. Still terrifying but more petite. As its name gives away, the colossal squid is much larger. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica, and these squids, on average, they're around 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. The biggest and baddest, of course. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it does grab, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to, you know, seven foot long Patagonian toothfish, not a goldfish. They're colossal, and they try and fight whales sometimes. They're crazy. They have no regard for the size of others. They're gonna fight anything and everyone. They're more often than not marked up, suggesting they've been in a few deep sea tussles. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being recent in 2014. Some believe this is the closest living relative to the Kraken. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off below. Either way, I'm gonna go throw up. I never want to see any of these in real life. Awesome. Starting us off at number 10 is a locked box. One might venture to say that the Egyptian pyramids are kind of like the OG time capsule. I mean, there are tons of rumors about things that were hidden deep inside the head of the Sphinx, and who knows, it could have been where we got the idea to start this phenomenon in the first place. Well, if not as a whole, it seems like that may have been Atlanta University's former president Thornwell Jacobs inspiration. Buried in 1940, it was modeled after a cell that one might find in an Egyptian pyramid, and inside the gigantic vault lies items that have been deemed crucial to our civilization thus far. Although considering it was sealed prior to the release of Spice Girls Wannabe, I have some provisions that I would like to make. Mementos such as classic works of film and literature, all the books of faith, the original script of Gone with the Wind, a sealed bottle of Budweiser, and and a typewriter are said to be kept inside. But 
What is the scary part, I'm sure you're asking? Well, it seems Mr. Jacobs had an inkling that it would be found by aliens. So at the front of the crypt lies a language integrator, which is apparently a machine intended to help the aliens who open the crypt with our mother tongue. Which makes me wonder, are the contents inside really what he said they are? Why do we want aliens opening it up? Seems suspicious is all I'm saying. Moving on to number nine, tombs of ancient Egypt. While a tomb might not be the first thing you think about when I say time capsule, by definition, time capsules are a historic cache of goods or information, usually intended as a deliberate method of communication with future people and to help future archaeologists, anthropologists, or historians. Which you could argue is all true about ancient tombs, and some of them are terrifying. For example, the tomb of Anktifi reads on the outside of the tomb, any ruler who shall do evil or wickedness to this coffin, may Heman, who's a local deity, not accept any goods he offers and may his heir not inherit. While the tomb of Kentika reads on the outside, as for all men who shall enter this my tomb, impure, there will be judgment, an end shall be made for him. I shall seize his neck like a bird, I shall cast the fear of myself into him. So yeah, a little spooky. Let's just hope they aren't actually cursed as well. Coming in at number eight, Box in the Woods. According to a now deleted Reddit account, several years ago, a man using his metal detector in the woods came across a time capsule. He excitedly opened it up, but soon found some disturbing items inside like a teddy bear, clothes, photos, a camera, and a girl's peewee softball medal from 2003. It looked like the belongings of a young girl, but soon people began to speculate, or rather worry, that the capsule could have been more of a trophy case of some unknown killer. Now if true, it's thought they wanted to hold on to these mementos and they've chosen the forest as the secluded spot where nobody would find it. And apparently police investigated the situation but concluded that the items were probably innocent memorabilia left as a time capsule by their owner. And let's just hope that is the truth. Next up at number seven. A hospital. On July 23rd, 2015, a demolition crew working on the grounds of the former Central State Hospital unearthed a time capsule buried on July 23rd, 1958 in the cornerstone of the Bar Treatment Center building. Now, first off, you have to admit it's a little creepy that this capsule was unearthed exactly 57 years to the day. Like, that just seems a little too coincidental not to be a little creepy. And the creepiness only continues. Inside was a video message to the future from doctors who worked there. Initially experts were really excited to hear what the message would say, but were disappointed to find that most of the audio had degraded over the years. However, there were some bits and pieces that survived. One man asks, how well do you think we've solved the problems of the future? Before audio cuts out and only comes back in for us to hear, electroshock treatment, as it is today. They then ask if insulin shock therapy has returned, among a few other explanations of the hospital grounds, until finally we hear them say, when the psychiatrists of the future open this time capsule, only they will be able to tell how well we've solved our treatment problems. Except we don't know what they were doing to solve the problems, and we may never know. Moving on to number six, a joint time capsule. Back in January of 1968, two Japanese companies agreed to create a joint time capsule project in celebration of Japan's World Exposition in 1970. Now, initially it was intended to be buried for 5,000 years, but the upper capsule was opened in the year 2000 and it is intended to be opened every 100 years afterward. Now, much of the contents were cultural artifacts, like art, literature, and music. But the item that was really spooky was the black fingernail of a Hiroshima survivor, which is both fascinating and a little spooky. Now, who's to say if that fingernail will still be around for centuries to come? I mean, they do decompose, but they can take years to do so. But whoever happens upon the black fingernail will, I'm sure, have some questions. Next up at number five, a World War II capsule. In 2016, a time capsule buried in 1934, fascist Germany by, you know, that army, was found in modern day Poland. What happened was after 
after the war ended, some European national borders shifted. Falkenberg, the town the capsule was originally buried in, was renamed and actually became a part of northwestern Poland. Apparently, archaeologists had known about this capsule's existence for a number of years, but since the capsule was buried in the building's foundation, it stayed inaccessible. Until archaeologists who excavated some 20 feet down while avoiding landmines finally extracted it. In the end, the contents were predictable. There were a number of photographs, including some of the leader, along with newspapers, coins, documents pertaining to training centers for assumed future leaders, along with two copies of the leader's manifesto. But while it may not have been a shock as to what was found inside, it is still pretty scary considering who this capsule was intended to commemorate. Coming in at number four, Greg Lee Youngman. In 2016, a demolition crew in Albuquerque, New Mexico, discovered a time capsule from 1968 near a former elementary school. And based on the messages discovered inside, some kids of the late 1960s had a pretty creepy vision for the future, especially Greg Lee Youngman. While some letters were sweet and wholesome, the letter that sent a chill down their spine read, I am dead. I go to Montgomery School. That is the old school name. I was born in 1900. Now I dead. My favorite subject is spooking the police. I play the guitar. In case you don't know what it is, it is a board with strings on them. I am 10 years old. See you later, savages. Signed by a boy named Greg Lee Youngman. I mean, maybe that is just a kid trying to mess with people of the future, but effort to find Greg have been unsuccessful, which of course has led some people to the conclusion that it really was a letter written by a ghost. Moving on to number three, J.M. Barry. The name J.M. Barry is most often associated with the famed writer of the Peter Pan story. But in 2010, two women happened upon an old steamer trunk wrapped in newspapers with the initials J.M. Barry written on it. Peculiar, they thought. They managed to break its lock with a screwdriver and inside found a trove of antique books and clothing. And they thought they'd found a time capsule. But Shockingly, they also found two leather doctor's satchels, each holding a mummified corpse of a little one. Investigations into this strange time capsule tomb began immediately, and initially there was suspicion that the famed writer could have been involved, as there was allegedly a copy of Peter Pan, as well as a membership for the Peter Pan Woodland Club Resort. But in the end, it was discovered that the initials actually belonged to a Janet M. Barry. But still, it was a creepy thing to come across and some believe it could have been some kind of horrific tribute to the tales of Peter Pan and Neverland, where you never grow up, if you know what I'm saying. Moving on to number two, Greg Wilkinson's letter. In 1995, a man named Greg Wilkinson wrote a letter detailing what life was like for him and his wife, Rosalind Green, along with a photo from their wedding day, and then hid the letter inside the walls of his home to be found years later by an unsuspecting stranger. The time capsule letter was discovered in 2017 by a tradesman, which was close to his wife's prediction of 2020, although Greg wrote he thought it would be closer to 20 2060 when it was actually uncovered. That being said, in it there were plenty of wholesome details like how much their house cost, the price of groceries, the new technologies, and that the internet was the big hot thing. But along with the good, there was also some terrifying. At the end of his letter, Greg wrote down predictions for the future, stating that he was doing so with no particular time span in mind. He wrote, Islam will become the next ideological problem, sparking an equal and opposite reaction, plunging large parts of the globe into a ridiculous holy war, each side believing they are more religious and righteous than the other, later saying that this war will go on for a long time. Time. Now, some have connected this statement as a prediction to the events on September 11th in 2001 and the conflicts that have followed, which is pretty scary to say the least. 
And last up in our number one spot, the freezer. In 2016, a woman in North Carolina thought she had struck an absolute bargain when she bought a freezer from her neighbor for just 30 bucks, which her neighbor explained she had been using as a time capsule. Now, I don't know about you, but I would be a little confused as to why a working freezer was being used as a time capsule. But you know, some people are just a little kooky and I'm sure that the woman chalked it up to that. However, when she brought it home and opened it up, she was horrified to find the human remains of her neighbor's mother in the freezer. In an interview, the buyer said, quote, she sold me her frozen mother for $30. How do you do something like that? But even more suspicious when the police went to investigate the situation, they found the daughter had already left town, telling the buyer that she was going to West Virginia to visit her mother in a nursing home, even though she knew full well where her mother really was. My question is, did she kill her own mother and flee, or was she just weirdly holding on to her mom? It's scary no matter what. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have plastic crustaceans. A few years ago, there were little shrimp-like creatures that were found 2,000 feet deep in the ocean, and of course, none other than the Mariana Trench. The little shrimpy crustaceans are approximately two inches long. You might be sitting there thinking, Olivia, a shrimp is not an interesting enough creature to have on this list, but it was when researchers looked into them further, more specifically into their bellies, when things got a little weird. After further research, scientists realized that there was plastic in the bellies of all of these crustaceans. They found PET, which is a common plastic resin that is most commonly used in the fibers for clothing, packaging for food, and for plastic drinking bottles. How did we discover a new species only to realize it had already discovered our plastic pollution? Scientists are hoping the discovery will bring more widespread attention to the plague of plastic pollution across our world. It probably isn't a great sign that it's affecting our undiscovered species, even in the more difficult to reach places. In our number nine spot today, we have the glowing jellyfish. Okay. We've all seen or at least heard of a jellyfish before, so it's not the most unusual discovery, but this fancy glowing one is definitely not your average run-of-the-mill kind of jellyfish. In 2016, scientists were surveying the waters near the Mariana Trench when they saw what looked like a glowing flying saucer, but as it turns out, it was just this new undiscovered jellyfish splayed out with its tentacles ready to catch some unsuspecting prey. Inside the bell of this jelly, you can see some bright yellow bulb like lights and some bright red markings as well. The jellyfish also has two kinds of tentacles, one short and one long. No description of this guy would truly do it justice, so here's a quick video just for reference. In our number eight spot today, we have the Casper octopus. This is one creature that just might be the cutest on this list, and it was discovered a few years ago by a little deep diving robot called the Deep Discoverer. One day, as the Deep Discoverer is you know, discovering things, it stumbles upon a tiny little octopus just hanging out on a flat rock all by itself. This octopus stumped scientists for a few reasons. Firstly, it kind of resembled a known common species of shallow water octopuses, but this one was found deep in the ocean. The second thing that stumped scientists was the ghostly white color they were seeing. Octopuses have certain pigments which allow them to change color, but this little guy seemingly didn't have them because he was ghostly and iridescent. At the time of the discovery, scientists were pretty sure this guy was a brand new species of octopus and even believed that it may belong to its own genus as well. In our number seven spot today, we have the Mariana snailfish. In May of 2017, the Mariana snailfish was caught on film at a depth of 8,178 meters in the Mariana Trench. At the time, this was the deepest fish ever recorded, which was a huge step forward for science. The fish was captured on video by a special little lander robot that was specifically designed for the crushing pressures of the deep sea in depths below 600 meters. The camera apparently had some sort of mackerel bait in order to entice the deep sea dwellers into getting close so the camera could get a good look at them. While this snailfish was an already known species, this video was able to catch it swimming 100 meters deeper than it ever had been found before. Was this guy just swimming to the beat of his own drum? Was he just desperate for the bait? Or maybe we just didn't previously know that these guys 
guys went that deep. The possibilities are endless. In our number six spot today, we have the fang tooth. These creepy deep sea dwellers are exactly the kind of thing that you would think lives in the deep, dark depths of the Mariana Trench. I truthfully think that they are so frightening, so I really hope that they just stay down there. These fish are named after their teeth, which totally makes sense considering the fact that these guys have teeth so large that in relation to their body size, they're the largest in the ocean. These guys have to have a special little pocket in the roof of their mouths, which are used to store their teeth so that they can actually close their mouths. That is both disgusting and horrifying. The good news is that these guys do not have very good eyesight at all. But I guess with teeth like that, who needs eyes? It is currently believed that these guys hunt by just bumping into their prey, sensing vibrations and movements in the water. All I'm saying is that the Mariana Trench is definitely staying off of my list of travel locations. In our number five spot today, we have the sponge. I don't know what it is about them, but sea sponges seriously gross me out. So to my dismay, in 2015, deep sea researchers stumbled across an insanely huge sponge deep in the ocean. And when I say insanely huge, I'm talking about the biggest one we've ever found, the size of a van kind of huge. This thing looks like a huge brain and is approximately 11 and a half feet long, six and a half feet high, and almost five feet wide. Researchers explained that huge sponges like this one are integral to providing key ecosystem services, like filtering a ton of seawater, as well as the fact that they act as a habitat for a ton of different invertebrate and microbial species. Sea sponges are apparently really difficult to date, but it is known that some can live as long as 2,300 years, which is insane. So I guess while they look ultra weird and really freak me out, they aren't all that bad and do some really important work. Just another case of not judging a book by its cover. In our number four spot today, we have the Gran Rojo jellyfish. These guys were first discovered in the mid 1990s and weren't officially categorized as a new species until 2003. Not only did their discovery come with a new species classification, but also a new subfamily. The species was originally being called Big Ugly, which seems like an unnecessary roast, but after some time, it was much more affectionately named Big Red. These guys are the largest of all sea jellies, growing to be around 76 centimeters in diameter. They have four to seven fleshy arms rather than the tentacles we're used to seeing on jellies. While most jellies are transparent, these guys are red all over. Because of their deep sea habitat, there is still so much we don't know about them, and only 23 have ever been actually found and identified. So while the research is currently lacking, scientists are doing their best to get us some more answers on these big red jellyfish. In our number three spot today, we have the barrel eye. Okay. This guy is one weird looking fish. The barrel eye fish is also known as a spook fish and they of course get their names due to their appearance. The fish are relatively small and are best known for their extremely unusual, transparent, fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered, there were so many questions surrounding them. At first scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after further research, it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate them both up and forward. This fish is usually found motionless, just hanging out in depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time with the first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photographer of a live one was captured for the world to also see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So not that I think anyone is gonna go diving in the Mariana Trench soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home. They're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number two spot today, we have the vampire squid. The vampire squid is the last surviving member of its order, and it has similarities with both the squid as well as the octopus, which might make it a contender for most threatening animal on today's list. Like the Dumbo octopus from part one of this video, this guy has little ear-like fins that help it propel itself through the water, but unlike the Dumbo octopus, 
It isn't small and cute and sweet looking. Like a jellyfish, the vampire squid has a gelatinous body that helps it move quicker through the depths of the sea. The vampire squid is covered in light producing organs called photophores, which they are able to use in a way that produces disorienting flashes so as to confuse their prey. While the vampire squid doesn't have ink, it does have the ability, when in really dangerous situations, to shoot out a bioluminescent mucus at whatever is attacking it. Also, this squid is able to regenerate its arms. So I think this all goes to say that if you were in a fight with a vampire squid, I really hope you came prepared because he sure did. In our number one spot today, we have the ghost fish. Okay, well, of course I had to end off today's list with just one more deep sea ghostly creature. And this one is actually super cool. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The the fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along, minding his own business, has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is most definitely always a step in the right direction. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have a plastic bag. It is unfortunately no surprise that on one of the deepest dives we as humans have ever been able to accomplish, along with all of the amazing new creatures and never been explored places, there would be none other than a plastic bag. In 2019, Victor Vescovo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is an unbelievable feat and not not an easy task, and he was rewarded by being reminded of human trash. Despite that little finding, Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which is of course amazing for scientific advancements and research. Every time someone manages to do these things that once seemed impossible, we get closer to revealing more of our ocean's mysteries that lay at the deepest points on Earth, which is very, very cool. While it would be amazing if the dives weren't plagued with plastic pollution, at least they were able to also discover a bunch of new crustaceans and give us all a little look into what life looks like in the Mariana Trench. At number nine, we have the Dumbo Octopus. It's an octopus whose favorite Disney movie is Dumbo. <laughs> just kidding, that would just be weird. Almost as weird as the real Dumbo Octopus. Although that is how it got its name, because it looks like Dumbo. Anyway, 9,800 meters below the surface and found deep in the Marianas Trench, you can find these dopey, kinda cute looking creatures. These creatures go from eight to 12 inches and swim using their ears. Seems cute and friendly enough, right? Well, surprising for all of us, the Dumbo octopus is actually a predator and can swallow its meals all in one gulp. These kind of octopi also fall under the category of umbrella octopuses because they have webbed tentacles, giving them an umbrella-like shape. Almost like a starfish, but with a massive balloon on its head. Luckily, we're all too big for this dopey looking octopus to feed on us, so if you wanna go for a swim and see some, you don't have to worry about them eating you. But I can't guarantee that the other deep sea creatures won't be as small. In our number eight spot today, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jelly move through the water like boat oars, and while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. I'm saying the word tentacles. <laughs> these tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on today. At number seven, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. 
It got its name because, well, it looks like a silvery swimming hatchet. There are over 40 species of hatchet fish and they can be found at the depths of 5,000 feet. That's just over 1,500 meters. This fish may be tiny, but it does not look that friendly nor welcoming. The deep sea hatchet fish can grow between 2.8 to 12 centimeters long. So while their size and appearance may not be enough to fend off predators, these deep sea fish have evolved to form an ingenious camouflaging technique. They are also like a lot of other deep sea fish because their bodies are bioluminescent, meaning they create their own light and can glow in the dark. Their light shines from their stomachs, but no, they do not have any Care Bear powers in case you were wondering. Revealing a silhouette can be dangerous in the deep ocean because of predators, but luckily for the hatchet fish, it can control its light to match the same light in the water. That's the super cool camouflage technique I was talking about. Man, that could be useful. In our number six spot today, we have the angler fish. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you might recognize these guys. This bony fish is known for its luminescent horn that is used to lure other fish as prey. There are different kinds of angler fish, but those who live in the deep sea are referred to as sea devils, which truly does feel fitting. The females are much larger than the males and can reach up to almost four feet, while the males can reach up to five and a half inches. But these little sea devils are able to eat prey up to the same size as itself. That's crazy. Luckily, most angler fish remain so deep in the ocean that they are not a threat to humans. And even if they did live not quite so deep in the ocean, most humans would just be too big for them to even try to attack. That sure doesn't mean they aren't crazy to look at though. Just to add a little more about how strange these guys are though, these fish reproduce when the male fuses into the female and lives off of her resources until it can produce sperm. That sounds like a nightmare. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. As if you weren't terrified enough of sharks, this one looks just as terrifying. Although, now that I see more pictures of it, I can't really take it seriously because it just reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld in the frilly shirt. Anyone else remember that episode? Sorry, Jer Bear, the shark wore it better. The frilled shark got its name for its six to seven frilled gills on the side of its snake-like body. But that's not the creepiest part of this shark. The frilled shark has a set of 300 razor shark teeth. They can grow up to six feet in size, which is 1.8 meters. Even though this was one of the first deep sea animals to be discovered in the 19th century, it's not the easiest to find. These sharks swim at depths of 16,000 feet, which is around 5,000 meters. However, it is extremely difficult for scientists to study this deep sea creature. They swim at such deep levels that when brought to the surface, they practically die immediately. Due to those reasons, there isn't much known about the habits and life cycles of these sharks, but maybe this is just one of those things that is better left unknown. In our number four spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as a little pet? These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name of course comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge slowly consumes its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me personally. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have the goblin shark. This shark might just be the creepiest thing on this list. I don't know about you, Olivia, but how did these guys get their names? Well, let's all take a look at the massive goblin-like nose on the front of its face. Yeah, that's how it's got its name. That's how it got its name. It's not really a pretty thing to look at, but at these depths, I don't think there's many people or other fish to impress. These sharks also aren't the usual grayish color. They are instead more of a pink. Not only do these things look absolutely crazy, they are also crazy in size. Goblin sharks can reach lengths up to 18 feet. That's 5.5 meters. You probably won't be swimming near any of them anytime soon anyway though, because they live at depths of 3,000 feet. That's about 915 meters. And the older they get, the deeper they dive. A shark that intentionally swims to its grave. How cute. Same as the filled shark, not much is known about these creatures. They are almost as mysterious and sought after as real goblins. For all we know, goblins are real, and when they get dropped in water, they morph into these crazy looking sharks and keep their distance from the rest of the world. <laughs> I buy it. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. 
These guys are a pretty strong contender for the strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery eel-like skin, which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the anglerfish, these guys have a little lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and very talented. And finally, coming in at our number one spot and our weirdest thing found in the Marianas Trench is the zombie worm, aka the bone worm, also, also known as the Osidax but I like zombie worm best. These worms live at the very bottom of the Marianas Trench and the very bottom of the ocean and feed off of bones of dead animals, such as whales. The zombie worm secretes acid to help access the inner contents of the dead bones and it then uses symbiotic bacteria to convert the bones, proteins, and fats into nutrients that it then uses as food. The feathery branches on the worm wiggle in the water and they pull in oxygen to keep itself alive. Females grow up to two inches in length while males are microscopic in size. Sorry, boys. Females will collect a harem of males on their body and then the males will find their way into the female oviducts. The female then releases her fertilized eggs into the water and the worm's life cycle begins again. That is about all we know about these little ones because they live at such deep depths of our ocean. So until us humans find ways to explore the depths of the Marianas Trench, we'll just have to make do with what we got. Next up at number 9 now we have the abandoned huts. On November 1st 1911, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott departed from Cape Evans on his Terra Nova expedition, trying to become the first human to reach the South Pole. They made it to the South Pole, but sadly they found they had been beaten to it by a group of Norwegians led by Amundsen. The team faced unusually bad weather on their return journey and tragically died before they could even reach their hut with all of their supplies. The hut was used by another team in 1917, but after that it was abandoned. For years, it was slowly covered in ice and snow until 1956 when a US expeditionary party dug it out. It was found to be in a remarkably well preserved state. The beds were as they left them, so too were their scientific instruments. Canned food still sits on the shelves. A London newspaper from that time is on one of the desks. The frozen and dry environment of Antarctica have preserved a lot of things, but decay does still occur there. Visitors to the Discovery Hut discovered the now century old seal meat as smelling quite rancid, and some people thought that the huts themselves are now affected by fungal decay. Moving on to number 8 now, we have bacteria. In 2008, scientists managed to revive bacterium extracted from Antarctic ice that was 8 million years old. You heard me right, 8 million years. Right away, many people became concerned. Was this a danger? It sounded a bit like the start of a Hollywood movie where the bacteria goes on to wipe out the whole of humanity. The scientists assured the public though that there was nothing to worry about and that the bacteria was unlikely to cause human diseases. You'll note that they said unlikely though. It's not definitely impossible. This bacteria is so old that when it came into existence 8 million years ago, the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees was alive on the planet. So, how are these things still alive? Well, Paul Falowski of Rutgers University described the bacteria as having been in a suspended state of animation for 8 million years, and that global warming melting glaciers could result in the release of more ancient organisms into the sea. Next up at number 7 now, we have the pyramid. In November 2016, the internet was abuzz with talk of a pyramid that had been found buried in the Antarctic ice. Now, before you dismiss this as nonsense, take a look at this picture. Yeah. That does look a lot like a pyramid. It was first discovered by the British Antarctic Expedition of 1910 to 1913. They were stunned by its appearance and decided to name it the Pyramid, a name still used on geological surveys of the area. It's located in the Ellsworth Mountains, which is a range more than 400 kilometers long. The pyramid is one of the peaks of this mountain range. Naturally, you know what I'm going to say next. Many conspiracy theorists stated that this is proof of an ancient civilization that lived on Antarctica. Before being
being consumed by the ice and their existence covered up by today's governments. Of course, experts have dismissed all of this, saying that pyramids are not a complicated shape and are not an uncommon appearance in nature. What do you guys think? Next up at number 6 now we have the lake. Lake Vostok is one of the biggest lakes on the planet. If you've never heard of it, don't worry, that's probably because Lake Rostock is buried underneath more than 2 miles of ice in Antarctica. It's been covered in ice for at least 15 million years, but it's still liquid down there. The crushing layer of ice from above and geothermal activity below have ensured that. Its presence was first suggested in the 1960s by a Russian pilot who noticed a large smooth patch of ice above the lake from the air. Radar experiments by British and Russian researchers in 1996 confirmed the lake's existence. The lake is massive. 140 43 miles long, 31 miles wide, and up to 2,625 feet deep. In 2012, Russian scientists managed to successfully drill a hole down to the lake's water. They believe that down there is microbial life that is unique from everything else here on Earth, having been isolated for 15 million years. Now the search begins. Next up at number 5 now we have Allen Hills 84001. In 1984, a team of US meteorite hunters discovered a Martian meteorite in Antarctica's ice. It was only about 4 3 pounds, but by 1996 it was causing quite a stir when a group of scientists claimed they had found evidence of microscopic life in the actual meteorite. Was this proof of life on Mars, or at least that life used to be on Mars because they thought it was fossilized? The media went into a frenzy either way. Even US President Bill Clinton gave a speech about it. The hysteria was because the strange chain structures on that meteorite looked like they could have been fossilized bacteria. There was also the fact that the meteorite broke off from Mars about 17 million years ago during a time when Mars had liquid water on its surface and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. It seemed like life could have been around then. Eventually these claims were rejected though and the features of the meteorite were explained without requiring life to be present. The meteorite now remains on display in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Moving on to number 4 now we have the dinosaur. In February 2019 the fossil of a new species of reptile was announced. It had been found by researchers in the Antarctic ice during a 2010-2011 expedition. It's believed to be an early relative of dinosaurs who lived in Antarctica millions of years before the continent drifted to its position over the South Pole and became uninhabitable for most complex life forms. Around 250 million years ago, Antarctica was covered in lush forests and rivers with many species of wildlife living there, including reptiles. The temperature is thought to have almost never dropped below freezing point. The scientists named the iguana-sized reptile Antarctanax shackletoni. Antarctanax translates to Antarctic King and Shackletoni is in honor of the Antarctic explorer Ernest Shackleton. Moving on to number 3 now we have Patchy Mass. In June 2018, YouTube user Wow For Real made a video showing his discovery of a 14 mile structure buried in Antarctica. He made the discovery using Google Maps and described it as a patchy mass that you could easily see from outer space. He said he'd used Google Maps to search the entire continent before and had never found anything like this. He even pointed out that there were strange brush strokes over the mass which made him think someone was trying to cover this up. It didn't take long before people started speculating about what was going on here. The YouTuber himself put forward the idea that if the brush effect was removed, perhaps we'd see some sort of giant UFO mothership buried in ice. In all probability, it's probably just a research facility, but we still don't know for sure yet as this strange block still remains on Google Maps to this day. You can even go and see it for yourself. Starting off this countdown, we have the UFOs. There are tons of urban legends surrounding Antarctica. In particular, it's thought that aliens once lived there after crashing into one of the mountains. From there, it's believed that they had their own secret base there. While in 2019, UFO hunter Scott Waring was on Google Maps looking at Antarctica from above when he spotted what he thought to be a UFO trapped under Antarctica's ice. According to Scott, he was looking over an island in Antarctica when he saw the craft. He said it was triangular in shape, has a hump in the middle, and it has a thicker edge. He believes that with global warming melting more and more of Antarctica, that the craft, which was once lodged in the ice, is slowly starting to reveal itself. But of course, no one has actually gone out to that spot to investigate what it might be. So it could just be ice, or it could be a real alien spacecraft. Now, I'm just a little concerned when that thing fully thaws. Like, I don't need no aliens coming back to life. No, thank you. In our ninth 
spot, we have the Loch Ness Monster. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because you know what? It really helps us out. A couple of years ago, another man was on Google Maps when he saw what looked to be a big monster lurking in the water. It was this massive dark mass that had a lot of people terrified. But later it was debunked saying that it was just a bunch of rocks. But did you know that a real life Loch Ness monster did once roam Antarctica? Yeah, over the course of a number of expeditions, scientists have discovered fossilized remains of a massive creature. And they say it's unlike anything they have ever seen. These remains are over 70 million years old and are from a creature that would have weighed about 15 tons. Not only that, but this thing was massive. It was 36 feet long. Now, it's considered to be part of the Elasmosaurid family, but this thing is the largest of its kind ever found. In our eighth spot, we have the Blood Falls. Now, if you're visiting Antarctica, this for sure would give you a heart attack. So they have something they refer to as the Blood Falls. There's a place where it literally looks like it's gushing out blood. It's like when the elevator doors open in The Shining and then like all that blood just gushed out. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So this was discovered back in 1911 by an Australian geologist. But don't worry, it's not actually blood. At first, it was thought that it was a result of microscopic red algae. But in 2003, it was actually discovered that the color was a result of oxidized iron. Nonetheless, it looks very creepy. In fact, I've seen this image circling around the web before and people are using it as a PSA of like, all the animals that have died in the Arctic and that's their blood. Clearly, it's false, but again, a very creepy image. Moving on to number seven, we have the creatures. Antarctica is home to a number of very creepy looking creatures. It was previously thought that because of its harsh conditions, nothing could survive there. But scientists have discovered a number of weird species that have adapted to survive in the environment. First off, let's talk about the sea spider. Now, Antarctica isn't the only place that has these creatures. But actually, the sea spiders in Antarctica are massive. In Europe, these spiders are about the size of your fingernail. In Antarctica, they're the size of a large dinner plate. Now, technically, they aren't actually spiders, even though they have eight legs. They belong to a class of species called pycnogonids instead of arachnids. Seriously, these creatures are terrifying looking. It's like a mixture of a crab and a spider. And those legs are super long. What's super weird about them is that they pump blood with their guts. This is the first time that this kind of circulatory system has been seen in nature. And they breathe through their skin, which actually allows more oxygen to be absorbed into their bodies, which allows them in turn to grow bigger over time. How great. Coming in at number six, we have the plane crash. In the 1970s, Antarctica, for some reason, was the place to travel to. Tons of tourists from New Zealand were booking day trips to Antarctica. However, one of these trips ended very badly. Due to low visibility, the plane crashed at the side of Mount Erubus. To this day, remnants of the crash are still there on the mountain. As for the passengers on board, well, their bodies were removed and stored at an American base on Ross Island. Many visitors to this day believe that this site is haunted by the ghosts of the passengers who died in the crash. People have heard eerie voices, felt ghostly presences, and have discovered unexplained footprints. One of the workers at the station experienced this all himself and is convinced it's haunted. So yeah, there's ghosts in Antarctica. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the ghost towns. Believe it or not, but Antarctica is filled with ghost towns. This is from humans trying to live there, but ultimately finding the weather conditions to be way too harsh, and then they end up just leaving. And they leave everything behind. As a result, there are tons of abandoned buildings and structures all over Antarctica, from military bases to research stations to huts. You get the picture. Back in the early 2000s, however, a team of scientists went to Antarctica and found something very disturbing. While exploring some of the abandoned buildings, they found several frozen bodies. Most likely, these people weren't properly equipped for the cold. But still, that must have been a horrifying find. In our fourth spot, we have the bristle worm. Okay, if you thought the sea spiders were bad, wait until you hear about this bad boy. This is something straight out of your nightmares. 
Basically, it's a worm-type creature with bristles, hence the name bristle worm. Its nasty looking bristles help it crawl along the ocean floor and swim and also to protect itself. This creature also has pretty sharp teeth and it's a carnivore. So, you know, there's that. Oh, and it extends its jaws to catch its prey. It gets worse. This thing is huge. It can grow to more than 20 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. No, thank you. No, that's just no. And the part of the creature that looks like it would be its head? No, that's its throat. I know, I'm grossed out too. And at number three, we have the penguin mummies. I mean like ancient Egypt mummies, not like the penguin's mom. So in 2016, a group of scientists discovered hundreds of mummified penguins in Antarctica. Since Antarctica has little precipitation and is dry and cold, it can mummify animals much like a desert would. In fact, it's still considered a desert even though it's cold. Well, anyway, scientists found a large amount of mummified penguins, many of which were just chicks. Some of the birds were from 200 years ago, others were from 750 years ago, all still perfectly preserved. It's thought that these birds died because of global warming. The weather drastically changed on these animals and it caused them to slowly die. Nonetheless, it must have been pretty creepy to arrive there only to find a graveyard of mummies. In our second spot, we have the monument. In 2009, a bunch of scientists in Antarctica discovered something rather strange. It was a monument with a bust of Vladimir Lenin on top, the former premier of the Soviet Union. After digging around the half-buried monument, they discovered an old Soviet Union military base, which by then was covered completely in snow. Had it not been for the monument sticking out, they probably would have never found it. Here's where it gets strange. After they unearthed this monument, the men began to become haunted by Lenin's ghost. And other explorers have claimed to have seen a ghostly apparition in that area, and they claim it looks exactly like him. Freaky, I know. Sometimes what's buried is sometimes better left buried. And in our number one spot, we have the ghost ship. Back in 1823, a boat named the Jenny left port on an exploration. However, along the way, something went wrong and it seems like the men aboard starved and then froze to death. The boat then got trapped in the ice in Antarctica. Several years later, a crew passing by noticed the ship and decided to climb aboard to see what's up. There they found the entire crew frozen to death, perfectly preserved. One of the last journal entries from the captain read, May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. That is so creepy.